So what they're doing is 75% of this multi-million dollar program is going to try to change a behavior that doesn't actually cause any accidents. Hi, I'm Tim Cavanaugh for Reason TV. We're here with Jay Bieber, who has been fighting the city and county of Los Angeles over red light cameras. Jay, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Pleasure to be been, here. You've uh, been identified as a, as a folk hero for your uh, <laughs> uh, efforts to end the red light camera regime. Can you just uh, give us a little idea of, of what's going on and what, you, what has been accomplished? I think the biggest accomplishment um, that we've had so far is that the police commission, which is a five-member civilian review board, um, they have decided uh, on a five to zero vote to end the red light camera program. And um, about, oh, I guess about five, six months ago, they were all in favor of the program. So in that time, um, from my efforts in um, providing them with information, and they're a very thoughtful group of people. Um, they're not politicians. They're appointed, and, and they're, you know, they're, really, they're really a great group of people. And they, and they looked at this issue from a scientific point of view, from an economic point of view, and they uh, decided that it wasn't worth continuing. And now there's pushback from that. I'm having a little trouble following the economics, because uh, we read that it, to, for a five-year extension of the project would be a budget uh, impact of $15 million. Also, that 100,000 people have gotten tickets. These tickets are about $450 each. And yet the city manages to lose a million dollars a year on it. How is that possible? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, the costs in running the program are, are extensive. The contract itself, at least the proposed contract, uh, would have been over $3 million a year to, put, uh, to have these red light cameras at these 32 intersections here in the city. And the city has like 46 hundred intersections. So it's a very small impact overall in terms of the city, um, in terms of what it could possibly do in terms of safety, um, but it costs the city, you know, three million dollars plus just for the contract. Then there's about a, uh, almost a million dollars in the cost of the police for their time and efforts to sit behind a desk and click a mouse and, and give people tickets all day long and go to court. Um, and then um, and then in terms of the revenue that comes back from the tickets, you know, it's, a, it's almost a $500 ticket here in Los Angeles and in, in the state of California. And um, not very much of that goes to the city. The state takes a very large chunk of that, and, the, um, and then the county takes some, um, and then the courts take some. So all told, the city gets probably less than 150 bucks or so per ticket. In most cases, if there were a traffic cop there, you probably wouldn't see a ticket issued in the first place. It's rolling right turns. That's correct, yeah. The rolling right turn is 75 percent of the tickets and the citations that are given. Um, we did a study because um, there has been this argument as, you know, is a rolling right turn dangerous? And we did a study on that um, and we looked at the database from the California Highway Patrol that has um, all the accidents in the state of California. We, we looked at uh, Los Angeles specifically and we found that um, it's extremely rare that an accident will occur for a rolling right turn. So what they're doing is 75 percent of this multi million dollar program is going to try to change a behavior that doesn't actually cause any accidents. It's more or less a judgment call too. I mean this is a California is a right turn on red state as I think probably most states are at this point and uh, it, you know this is a, the issue is it's just turned and you never really come to a complete stop. You're already halfway through, you make the turn. I did it twice on the way to work. <laughs> Another thing you found in, uh, in, in your studies, and I think there was a 2008 study to back this up, was that uh, there is a case to be made that uh, red light cameras actually increase the number of accidents. Can you expand that, on that? Yeah, that's true. The red light cameras have been shown in a number of cases to increase uh, rear end collisions. And the reason for that is that when a driver um, approaches an intersection where there's a red light camera, they may react in an unusual way. So they may slam on their brakes, for example. And then the argument is, well, the person shouldn't have been following them so closely. But on the other hand, if somebody slams on their brakes in front of you, how much of that is your fault? The other thing that's, that's dangerous about them um, from an accident standpoint is that some people will speed up and try to speed through the intersection because they're trying not to get that ticket as opposed to trying to drive safely. And those are, those are sometimes not exactly the same things. Right. What's a better way to, uh, let's assume that, that, you know, I'm not going to volunteer anything, but let's assume we all agree that people shouldn't be running red lights well, and course. so forth. What's the best way to get that uh, under control? A large part of red light running, and, and 
I like to sort of call it red light incursions because basically what happens is at the very end of the yellow when the light turns red, that's exactly where all these violations are occurring. They're, they're like eighth of a second, quarter of a second violations. I mean, there's, these are very technical violations of people misjudging exactly when the light is going to change. And the way that you deal with that is you lengthen your yellow light. What you want to do is you want to make sure your yellow light uh, conforms to a, a particular uh, scientific formula and you're supposed to use the speed of the approaching traffic. Um, in a lot of cases, like here in Los Angeles or in the state of California, they use the posted speed limit, which is not necessarily the actual speed of the traffic approaching the intersection. So if you lengthen your yellow light, and we've seen this in every single case where it's happened, the city of Loma Linda, they lengthen their yellow lights uh, by one second, and they saw um, an over a 90% drop in um, violations the very next day. So what does that tell you? That tells you 90 some odd percent of violations don't have to happen if you have a long enough yellow light. The other thing to do is to make sure you have what's called an all red phase. And that means that the, um, the light is red in all directions. So if somebody does miss the end of the yellow and get, go into the red, the cross traffic hasn't started. So you're not going to have an accident. And that's the two, those are the two things that you can do that will improve your intersection safety the most. Mm -hmm. What's your big technical hurdle in explaining this to people and explaining it to the, the police commission in a way that they could eventually not only understand but change their minds? We're a very science-based organization, Safer Streets LA, but if you don't have a science background or you're not used to thinking in, in logical terms, you're thinking in emotional terms, like for example, oh, well, we have to stop red light running to save the children, you know, that kind of thing, and that's usually the argument from the other side. But it's not about that, it's about the science and what actually causes inadvertent red light running, and then the really serious kinds of red light running, which is, for example, somebody who's distracted, or somebody who is impaired, or somebody who is fatigued, or somebody's fe fleeing the police. Those are the kinds of things that actually cause the really serious um, red light running accidents, and those things are not going to be affected by a, a red light camera. It's really only somebody who might say, oh, I think I can make it, and then they and they don't. So trying to explain that and explain the science behind it is really the biggest hurdle. You've won the science argument with regard to the police board and you've won the economic argument because uh, the city controller Wendy Gruel has issued the statement saying that the city's losing a million dollars a year. There's still a big political hurdle. You know it's interesting because people hate red light cameras. Everywhere in the country um, that these have come up for a, a vote um, they have been voted down by usually very, very large margins. So there's no argument that can be made that um, the public is in favor of red light cameras. I think the only argument can be made is that you know, the public is somewhat apathetic if they don't live in an area that has them or they haven't gotten a ticket themselves. So sort of motivating people to speak out, and we've been fairly successful in doing that, um, is not as easy as it would otherwise be. People have lives and they have got to go to work and they, they got to live their lives. And it's interesting to me how the politicians don't recognize the, the groundswell of opposition that's actually out there under the, somewhat under the surface. And I think they're going to be unpleasantly surprised that when they do run for higher office that this issue is going to come back and bite them very, very hard. Mm -hmm.